I introduce myself in the language that I grew up with and now I'm speaking the language that I didn't, I learned until I was in the second grade. And so English is my second language. I'm very humbled and very thankful that I have an opportunity to come before you. And I just did not come here today just to be here. I started with a prayer this morning when I woke up, talked to our uh, Creator, Holy Spirit, the Yin, the Yin Yot A. I talked to Him today, expressed my thoughts and my feelings about the day and what was on my mind. And I prayed about this evening as I was going to come here and to meet new relatives, new people, different ones from different homes. And that I would come here to your home here. And through that, I come in prayer. My son and I, we came here. And that spiritual thought and then within that spiritual feeling. One of the most important and enjoyable parts of this life to me today is to talk about the yin, to talk about sotazin, to talk about otla, to talk about ina. The yin means Holy Spirit, as we say, or we say God. I love to talk about God. I love to talk about our Lord and Savior, His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. I love to talk about that. I love to talk about the principles and the ethics that is here with us today through many different forms, whether it's the good book and whether it's through song and whether it's through prayer or even just a sharing of love and understanding between our relatives. Because that is what is the essence of life as I have come to understand. I am 55 years old today. And come to this time in my life, it appears that I have been drawn nearer to my, to my Creator, to my Lord and Savior, like that. And so, I was especially glad and happy that I could share a little bit with you today. As they say in our Navajo culture, they taught us and they told us that we came through something that was very dismal, something very evil at one time in our lives. We came through that and we prevailed, we survived it. And they say that it happened in our history at one time. They have stories about it. They still have ceremonies that depict and explain what happened at that time. And so as we prevail through those times, we were at our wit's end. We didn't know where to go. We didn't know what to do. When we say we, these were the holy people themselves that were here. Those are the words we were at our wit's end. But through a miraculous phenomenon that took place, a star appeared. That star appeared and in that star, there was a miracle birth that took place. That miracle birth is in what we call 
white shell woman, it came in the form of a woman and in that form she was put here in a miraculous way and for a good reason. When she was put forth here so that she could bear some children, two sons, two warriors that she could give birth to. And through that birth, these two warriors grew and their role and their mission was to go after the evil, to go after the sickness and the destruction that was there. And through that, they came upon a person. She was called Spider Woman. And Spider Woman gave these two twin warriors on their way to battle, two eagle plumes. And she said, this is going to be the male eagle plume. This is going to be the female eagle plume. Together, this is going to be a prayer. This is going to be your faith. This is going to be your strength. Whatever that you do, do not, do not question it. Do not falter from it. Do not escape it. And they listened to her. They went to battle. And through that, this eagle plume was their armor. This eagle plume was their article of faith that they would stand upon and they would float on it when these evil and when this destruction came. And so they prevailed. When they prevailed, they came back together again. And when they came back together again, they came upon these four sacred mountains that we have. Sisna Jinda to the east, so to the south, Dogosli to the west, and the Bensa to the north. The boundaries of what we call our home as the Neh. And they stood upon those mountains and they looked upon the land and they had a crystal. And through that crystal, they looked at that and they said, all is clear, all is good. Then they went to the south mountain, they looked in their crystal and checked the land. They said, there is no evil anymore. Then they went to the west mountain, they did the same thing. They looked through their crystal and they said, Then they went to the north mountain and then they looked at their crystal and said, now means at the tail end of our prayer today. You will hear Navajos when they pray, they say, Because that is an explanation, it is a faith, it's a prayer. That is why you put that at the end. You might be praying about something that might have been bothering you. There might be something that was, wasn't just quite right. But through prayer, you prevailed. Just the way that the warrior twins did for all of us. So when that time came, then that star appeared again. And that star came in the form of another holy person called the Nehdiyana. The Nehdiyana. That the Nehdiyana is a person, a holy person. And they say and they prophesy at the time that this person is going to appear in many different forms, in many for different many different nations, many different people upon this no sun, upon this earth. That the Nehdiyana is going to carry the 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 belief that the Nehdiyana is going to carry the prayer, the teachings of the of our God Almighty, the Father. That that this person would do that. And so to, to with our Navajo people, we call that Nikitigin the Nehtigin. Years later, 
as we came upon this people, as we progressed as a nation, as Nehokatinne, we heard the name in another way, by another language. We heard the name Jesus Christ. That's what we heard over here. So to us, when we say Tanehtigina, we mean Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. That is the connection that we have made here as Navajo people. And so through that, the, the, the basic principles of Tanehtigina, Jesus Christ, is the fact that you have faith. Otla, you have to have Otla. Otla means faith, belief. You have to have that. You cannot go without it. Your faith is your vision. Your faith is your hearing. Your faith is your thinking process. Your faith is something that is like water and food to you. You cannot go without it. And, the, and, and just like us, our faith in God Almighty today, we have to feed it because it hungers. It has, hung, it has hunger, it has thirst. And so we feed it with prayer. When we say a prayer, we feed that hunger, we feed that faith that we have here. That, what, that was what this Tanehtigin established. They say that through that faith, because of where we came from, of what had happened, that we will always have hope as well. Without hope, we will not, have, without faith, we will not have hope. That's the name that we have. So through faith, we have, we have hope. If we lose faith, we have no hope. So if we lose faith in Jesus Christ to be our Lord and Savior, if we lose that, we have no hope. Then everything disintegrates and chaos comes into our lives. And through that faith and through that hope, we may be all down and out, no money, no food, no water, however way. Then this the Nehtigina said, you're going to find Kah. You're going to find Kah. Kah means that we have relationships with one another. You may have a father and a mother. You will have a brother. You will have a sister. You will have somebody that you're going to make relationships with. So through that, we are a people that is comprised of a family unit. It could be an individual family unit, it could be an extended family unit. So through that, we have family. We will always have family. Just like me, I don't have any brothers. My mother and my father, I have five sisters. But through that, same mentality and belief system. I made a brother years ago with Mr. David Jordan. One day, our dad, Dwayne, sat me down and he said, I'm going to tell you something that I think is so beautiful. I thought he was going to talk to me about the Dallas Cowboys or <laughs> something like that. Or tell me about Navajo tribal government back in the 70s. <laughs> but he said, you know what, Justin? He said, I'm going to tell you something. The relationship that I see with you and my son, David, it makes me feel good. I believe that there is some, uh, some bond that you have between you two. It's not just lawyer to lawyer. There's something more than that. I see that, I hear that, I feel that, he said. So as the father here to David, and you also call me dad, I enjoy that. I thank you for that. And I encourage you to continue to support one another, to continue to stand by one another. There's all sorts of things that you guys deal with. Clients bring you that. 
but you always find that closeness to resolve something for somebody. And I thought that was the most beautiful thing that I, I, I heard in a long time. So again, through Kah, through that family, David and I is, is that way. Now I came here, many of you don't know me, I don't know you. But when we walked up and used some of the food that you provided for us, I could feel that closeness here of family together. Amen. I could feel that. I could feel the spirit, your spirit, your goodness and kindness and the love that you have. I felt that and I thank you for that today. Likewise, I prayed about this this morning. And so we bring that here like that. So number three, they say that you're going to find that in this life. And then when you, when you are all down and out, somebody's going to come help you. Somebody's going to say, either they're going to pray for you, or they're going to bring you some food, some water, or something that you're going to need. Maybe that there, there's some kind of a token that they're going to bring to you. But through that, you're going to find that you're not going to be familyless. You're not going to be relationshipless. So they say, but most important, the relationship that you have with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that is the main cat that is in your life. That's what they said. And so we carry that on today. Number four, they say that through that, you can find love. We often say a lot of times our relatives are out there and they say, I cannot find love. Nobody loves me. So thereby, maybe I'm going to go drink. Maybe I'm going to go do other things. Maybe I'm going to do this. Maybe it's a relationship problem. Maybe they say that my, my spouse or my girlfriend or my boyfriend doesn't love me anymore. So then they do all sorts of things. But they say, as long as you have sotizen, that prayer, that faith in your life, you always will have love, love from your creator, love from the creation that the creator gave all of us from this earth and this sky, this light here, this water that we drink here, this, this wind and rain that's here. There's love that comes from that. Even the plants and the vegetation, there's love that comes from that. But most of all, there's God's love. And they say that God's love was packaged and put in a real beautiful way. And they gave that to the women folks. To when your mother gives you birth, they say that that's the closest thing that you can feel to God's beautiful love that's there, that you can actually touch it and feel it and hear it. That's what our people, that's what they believe in. And so through that, that is, that is something that is really unique. I believe today that I have followed all these many years um, my relatives, brothers, sisters of this congregation. So we've come, we've come from something that was very awful, disgusting, and it was very heart-wrenching too. Because many of our congregation members, at one time we sat in here with, they walked out of this home like this, and they never came back because of what we went through here in the last couple of years. So that was hurtful, that was painful. And so that's where we came from. But yes, we have faith, we have prayer, we have that. Yeah, that's still here and we have love for one another. And so just to bring that together of how our Navajo perspective on things, of how we look at things and how we bring that together because we have one faith, we have one prayer. And that makes us unique as praying people, my relatives. I thank you for that, for this opportunity to say something. And I thank God for today. And we ask Him that we could continue to prosper some more, to protect us from any harm, evil, or danger some more. 
And I'm going to say these words here and share that with you, all of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, Beautiful. Oh, yeah.